Sao Paulo is one of the largest cities in the world. And across this bustling urban sprawl, a growing global problem. Children, millions of them, working and living on the streets. They lead a precarious, all too dangerous life. Living on the street, sleeping on the street, they're, they're um, exposed to pedophiles, to um, corrupt police that want to harm them in some way, um, to anybody who wants to do them harm. And so uh, many of our children are murdered, many of them die. Kelly Magalyais and her husband George have made it their lives work to try and save them. One by one, we're trying to get the children off the street in Sao Paulo. British-born Kelly is an evangelical Christian. She first became aware of the problem of street children in 1994 after reading about it in a magazine. And as I read this magazine article, I just began to cry and cry and cry and cry. And I thought, oh, I'm not going to stay here in England with my nice job and my nice house and my nice life. I'll go and see if I can do something about it. She moved to Brazil and began working in the slum neighborhoods called favelas. There, she met a Brazilian man, George, who shared her vision. They got married and founded a non-denominational ministry called Associação Aguia, Project Eagle, to try and rescue street children. Kelly, George, and their teams of volunteers work directly in the streets, finding the kids and trying to build their trust. Sometimes we just go and talk. Sometimes we uh, take a bag of activities and we do drawings and. Um, they do colorings. It's very fascinating to see what they draw. Often they draw houses and families because that's their dream. Actually, I present myself as a, a friend to the boy or a girl. I said, I want to be your friend. And uh, if I can help in some, some way, you can tell me what I can do to help you. As they chat with the children, they try to find out their situation. I asked him where he lived and he wouldn't tell me. And I said, it's okay, I'm not gonna take you home. I just want to help you if I can, and he told me where his mum lives. And, um, oh, but he some... doesn't live with her? No, he lives here on the street. There are two types of street kids. The first are called children on the street. They do actually live with their parents, usually in a shack or slum, but they work all day on the streets, begging or finding odd jobs. At the end of the day, they go back and they give the money to their mum or their stepfather or whoever and um, sometimes that money is used to buy food but more often it's used to buy alcohol or drugs or something like that. Then there are children of the street, those who live here day and night. Often they've run away either to escape abuse or to use drugs. Many steal to survive and to support their addictions. Some move on to more serious crimes. Children start doing drugs young here. They get high by inhaling glue and paint stripper. They put it in what looks like a bottle of mineral water and then they breathe that through their mouth. It's actually worse for them than, than if it, they're sniffing glue. It's so high on paint stripper. Over time, Project Eagle volunteers get to know the children and then try to figure out what the best situation for them would be. Can they return home or do they need to go into drug rehab? Giselle, who's now 16, left home years ago to live on the streets. I lived here mostly because I wanted to, but mostly because of the drugs. Four months ago, she had a baby and moved back home with her mother. Today, Giselle left her baby at home, and Callie finds her hanging out on the streets again. Project Eagle also offers practical help, such as food and medical assistance. The whole gospel is the one that you not just say, God bless you, but you provide everything that will be necessary for the person. On this day, they're bringing packages of food to kids who live in what's called a squat, a rambling den of makeshift shanties under a bridge. More than 50 people live here, including 38 small children. These kids have all been on the streets for years. Julia is eight and a half months pregnant. I asked if she's worried about having a baby here. She said um, it should be okay. The problem is, is that if she goes into labor here and she's not well, the ambulance won't come here. She has to go by foot to the hospital. The kids tell me they're glad to have some shelter, but they say they sleep with one eye open. People throw kerosene in here to try and drive them away. Street children are often attacked. Many simply disappear. They're often viewed as a social nuisance or worse. They 
pickpocket, they steal people's uh, mobile phones, they um, cause a lot of problems. And so people don't see them as a child who needs love and care and a new future. They see them as a huge problem. And so what you do with a problem, you try and eradicate it. Vigilantes and corrupt cops have been accused of killing the children just to get rid of them. Some are taken to youth prisons where George goes to counsel them. Inside the youth prison, it's better to talk to them because they are not taking drugs there. So I can talk to them clearly. And, uh, and most of those, they want some help. When we went to the youth prison at the beginning, they used to give us the sort of sort of mild cases, like a child who'd maybe stolen an apple or that kind of thing. And now they give us the murderers and the rapists and, and the kidnappers. And they look at us and they say to us, look, this one, only God can change. Yeah. And it's true. Some of the children rescued from the streets end up here at this rehab compound called In the Hands of the Angels. They're treated for drug and alcohol addiction and taught basic life skills. It's a church-run ministry about an hour outside the city. The young men here farm, go to school, and get vocational training. One of the residents is a 19-year-old former street kid named Danilu. Danilu says he ran away from home when he was eight because his alcoholic father abused him. George met Danilu in youth prison, and after he was released, George got him placed here five months ago. Danilu says God has given him a new life. I just want to thank God that I'm here and that without God there's nothing. That I'm here today and I'm well and I'm healthy because of God and someone who hasn't got God hasn't got anything. He says he wants to go to university and study anatomy. He never wants to go back to the streets and he worries about the kids still there. Yeah, it's very dangerous. I've already seen people being killed in front of me. Um, I never killed anybody, praise God, but I've already seen people being murdered. One of the biggest challenges, Callie says, is getting street children to think beyond today. We like to sit down on the ground with them and talk to them about their dreams. And we say, what do you want to be in the future? What do you want to be? And they look at you and they say, what do you mean? Project Eagle tries to help them find their dreams. You know, they have dreams. It's just that they're so um, deep down inside them that no one ever bothers to, to pull them out of them. And so we, we try to talk to them about thinking about tomorrow, helping them to look at themselves and believe in themselves that they, they can have a future, that they don't have to live on a street in the middle of such dirt and violence and crime and drugs, that uh, God created them, that he loves them and that he has a plan for their lives. But it can be work with a low rate of return. First year we worked on the streets, we took 11 people to rehabs and at the end of the year the 11 people were back to the streets. So. <laughs> when you invest time into a person's life and you, and you love that person, we love the children that we work with and you want to see them um, succeeding and then just suddenly something will happen and they'll run away from the rehab or it's just so sad and um, we do cry, we, we weep into our pillow because we feel so sad for that person's life. Still, they press ahead. They're training new volunteers, including ex-street children. And they're working to build new family-based rehabilitation centers. They believe that bit by bit, they can make a difference. We don't mark success by numbers. We mark success by a hug, cleaning a child's face, washing their feet, um, giving a family a packet of food that they would be starving hungry if they didn't have that food that day. Um, just doing something to make that person's life better in some way and showing the love of Jesus to them. I'm Kim Lawton in Sao Paulo, Brazil.